Hey YouTube, welcome to the Subnetting Mastery video series. This is part two of a two-part appendix which covers FLSM and VLSM. In part one, we taught you how to quickly and easily solve FLSM questions. In this video, we'll teach you how to do the same for VLSM questions. The best way to learn VLSM is to visualize the process as it is happening in front of you. So we're gonna work through an example VLSM prom for the 9.9.9.0 slash 24 network. We're given a slash 24 block of IP addresses, which gives us 256 IP addresses to delegate. We're going to assign subnetworks from our slash 24 across these eight segments. Each of these segments will require a certain amount of IP addresses, and it'll be our job to assign subnetworks as efficiently as possible. This is a typical VLSM problem. You're given a starting network of IP addresses and a bunch of segments that require a various amount of host IP addresses. If you watched the prior video, then you know we can break up our slash 24 network into two slash 25 networks. This splits up the 256 IP addresses in our slash 24 into two slash 25 blocks of 128 IP addresses each. We could keep going to break up our slash 24 into four slash 26 networks, each containing 64 IP addresses, or eight slash 27 blocks, each containing 32 IP addresses, or 16 slash 28 blocks, each containing 16 IP addresses. We could go further, but we'll stop here for now. We will use this visualization of the IP address space we have available to allocate to illustrate variable length subnet mask problems and how to solve them. Let's start with this network on top, which requires 25 IP addresses. What we need to do is find the smallest size subnetwork that can contain 25 IP addresses. 16 IP addresses is not enough, so we can't assign a slash 28. 64 IP addresses is too many IP addresses, so it doesn't make sense to assign a slash 26. The smallest size subnetwork that can contain 25 IP addresses would be a slash 27, which gives us 32 total IP addresses, which means one of these blocks of IP addresses will be allocated to our first subnetwork. If you watch the subnetting mastery video series, then you are familiar with this subnetting cheat sheet, and you know that this first row indicates both the number of IP addresses in each subnetwork as well as the increment between each network ID for each subnetwork. We're assigning a slash 27, which has an increment of 32. If we started at dot zero and listed every increment for slash 27 networks, we would get this. What this means is that the first slash 27 block has a network ID of 9.9.9.0. The next slash 27 block has a network ID of 9.9.9.32. The fifth slash 27 has a network ID of 9.9.9.128, and the seventh slash 27 has a network ID of 9.9.9.192, and so on. We just need to pick one of these blocks to assign to our subnetwork. For our purposes, we'll simply pick the first block, which means our first segment, which requires 25 IP addresses, is assigned the subnetwork 9.9.9.0 slash 27 for its IP space. Now let's repeat the process for this next network. This network requires IP space for 50 hosts. Again, we need to find the smallest size network that can contain 50 IP addresses. 16 is not enough, 32 is not enough, 64 is just right, which means for this network, we'll have to assign a slash 26. Our cheat sheet tells us that the increment for a slash 26 network is 64, which means our four slash 26 networks have these network IDs. We just need to pick one to assign to our segment. Now we have to be careful here. It might be tempting to simply grab the first one, but that won't work. You see, when we assigned the slash 27 earlier, we committed the IP addresses 9.9.9.0 through dot 31 to the first segment. This first part of the first slash 26 includes those IP addresses, which are no longer available. This means we cannot assign the slash 26 since a portion of it is already in use elsewhere in our topology. The next completely free slash 26 we can assign would be 9.9.9.64. And this is the subnetwork we will assign to our segment that requires 50 IP addresses. Now let's do the same thing for this third network, which requires 10 IP addresses. Again, we'll find the smallest size network that has 10 usable IP addresses, and this points us to a slash 28 network. The increment for a slash 28 network is 16, which means our slash 28 subnetworks have these network IDs. We can't use these first two, as that IP space is already in use elsewhere. 
we can't use these four either for the same reason. There are many remaining slash 28 subnetworks that we could use. For our purposes, we'll simply pick the first available, which means our third segment will receive the IP space 9.9.9.32 slash 28. At this point, we've worked through three segments, one at a time. Now I'd like to show you how to go about solving VLSM prompts more efficiently by working through these next three segments at the same time. There are two overarching steps you should take when solving VLSM prompts. The first step is start by listing out all subnetwork sizes you will need. This first segment requires 19 IP addresses, and the smallest size subnetwork that can accommodate 19 usable IP addresses is a slash 27. This next segment requires 12 IP addresses, and the smallest size subnetwork that can accommodate 12 usable IP addresses is a slash 28. The next segment requires 31 IP addresses. It might be tempting to assign this network another slash 27, but be careful. A slash 27 has a total of 32 IP addresses, but only 30 of those are usable, which wouldn't be enough for us. Therefore, to accommodate 31 hosts, we will have to go to the next size up, which would be a slash 26. That takes care of our first step for BLSM problems, which was simply to list out all the required subnetwork sizes based upon the needed amount of IP addresses. The second step for VLSM problems is to actually allocate subnetworks to each segment. Here's the key though. The best strategy to do this is from largest subnetwork to smallest subnetwork. Notice earlier we left this slash 28 orphan between allocated IP space. Now this isn't intrinsically a terrible thing, but we could avoid this entirely if we allocated IP addresses from biggest to smallest. So from here on out, we'll follow that best practice and start with the biggest network, which for us will be this slash 26. The increments for a slash 26 network is 64, so our network IDs would have these IP addresses. And the first fully available slash 26 network we can allocate is 9.9.9.128 slash 26. The next biggest network would be our slash 27. The increments for a slash 27 network is 32, so our slash 27s will have these network IDs. The next fully available slash 27 subnetwork would be this one. So we allocate 9.9.9.192 slash 27 to our segment which requires 19 IP addresses. Finally, we take care of this 28. The increment for slash 28 is 16, which gives us these network IDs, and the next available slash 28 network would be this one. So we allocate 9.9.9.224 slash 28 to this last segment. Notice, when we allocated IP space from biggest to smallest, we didn't leave any free blocks of IP addresses stranded between allocated blocks. And that concludes step two of VLSM prompts, which was to actually assign subnetworks based upon the subnetwork sizes we determined we needed from the first step. Which brings us to these two segments, which each only require two IP addresses. Given that every router interface must have an IP address in the networks they are attached to, we can presume that the two IP addresses needed for this top segment are one for each router interface. The same is true for the bottom network. Each router interface gets one IP address, which is where the required two IP addresses for this network are coming from. Segments with only two required IP addresses are sometimes referred to as point-to-point -point networks. The only two members of the segment are the routers themselves. The smallest size subnetwork you can get with two usable IP addresses would be a slash 30 which is a total of four IP addresses. And that is the size of subnetwork we will assign to each of our point-to-point -point networks. Now we need to carve out slash 30 subnetworks. Our visualization only went to slash 28. So let's grab one available slash 28 and use that to carve out smaller subnetworks. We can break up that slash 28 into two slash 29s with eight IP addresses each, or four slash 30s with four IP addresses each. The slash 28 we started with was 9.9.9.48 slash 28, which means the network IDs for these slash 30s start at dot 48, and each increase by 4. We can pick the first two to use in our topology, given these two point-to-point -point segments the address space of 9.9.9.48 slash 30 and 9.9.9.52 slash 30. But there's something I need to point out here. Earlier, we said that the smallest subnetwork size that has two usable addresses is a slash 30. That was true at one point, 
but an RFC was published which allows the use of a slash 31 on point-to-point -point networks. The idea there is if there's only one other node on your network, you'll never really need a broadcast address, so why have one at all? A slash 31 has two total IP addresses and both are usable as host addresses. Therefore, while what we did was acceptable for most entry-level certification exams, it might not work for more modern or professional and senior level certification exams, nor would it work in the real world, because we could save more IP addresses if we instead assign slash 31 networks for our point to point links. So we'll continue to carve out our slash 28 into slash 31 networks, which have an increment of two, and we can simply pick the first two slash 31s to assign to our point to point links. And that, my friends, is how to solve BLSM questions. To summarize, there are two steps. The first step is to determine and list out all subnetwork sizes based upon the number of IP addresses you need in each segment. Remember to always pick the smallest possible subnetwork and to account for usable addresses versus total addresses in each block. The second step is to allocate IP address space from largest subnetwork to smallest making sure not to use the same set of IP addresses for multiple allocations. And that concludes the teaching on VLSM questions. I hope you found the extension to the Subnetting Mastery video series helpful. If you did, I'm willing to bet that you know someone else that would benefit from these videos as well. Please help me spread the word and share Subnet IPv4 with your friends. You can also get more free resources and stay up to date with us by signing up for the newsletter at practicalnetworking.net. Thank you for watching and have a great day.